All right, Salim Rezai here, and recently I put out a video on gastrointestinal hemorrhage and determining whether your patient is most likely to have an upper or lower GI bleed. Several people reached out and asked about transfusion and targets of resuscitation, so I thought I would put this video together for you. So in terms of targets of resuscitation for GI bleed, there's really no good data to help us, but many people extrapolate from the trauma literature. And so what are some of those targets? Well, we want to get our hemoglobin greater than 7, platelets over 50,000, INR of less than 1.5 to 2, depending on where you work. And then additionally, we want to make sure our fibrinogen is greater than 1 gram per liter, a lactate less than 2. And for those patients requiring massive transfusion protocol, we want to not forget about calcium supplementation. So transfusion requirements. In my mind, there are really only two things you need to ask yourself. Is my patient hemodynamically unstable? And what are my indications for massive transfusion protocol? So if my patient is hemodynamically stable, we're going to use a restrictive transfusion strategy, which is we only transfuse packed red blood cells when our hemoglobin becomes seven or less. In a hemodynamically unstable patient, we're going to transfuse blood products regardless of what the hemoglobin is because the hemoglobin tends to lag and we know the patient is losing blood. Indications for massive transfusion protocol, there's really three of them in my mind. Hemodynamic instability with a brisk bleed, a shock index of greater than one, so basically your heart rate being higher than what your systolic blood pressure is, and then requiring greater than four units of packed red blood cells per hour. Now, it's just not as simple as giving one round of blood products. We have to check labs for our massive transfusion protocol. I check these pretty frequently, maybe every couple hours is what I'm checking in my seriously hemorrhaging patients. If my hemoglobin is less than seven, they're getting packed red blood cells. If my platelets are less than 50,000, they're getting platelets. If the INR is greater than 1.8, they're getting fresh frozen plasma. And if my fibrinogen is less than one gram per liter, I'm giving them cryoprecipitate. Now, some people are lucky enough to have TEG and Rotom at their shop, and this is an infographic I put together listing all the different components of TEG and Rotom, what are the abnormalities, and then what's the problem, and what do you need to transfuse. Unfortunately, at my shop, we do not have TEG and Rotom, but for those of you that do, hopefully you find this to be useful. Well, there you have it. There's your GI bleed targets of resuscitation. Please let me know your thoughts, comments, and questions, and thanks for tuning in.